So far, we learned how Redux works and how we use immutable objects and arrays. So far, we also only used one reducer. But in bigger applications, you'll typically have more than one reducer. You might have reducers for different parts of your application. So in our application, our little Redux application here, right now we're doing moth related stuff. So we might have a moth reducer, whoops, a moth reducer here. Now let's say I'll remove the username here and I'll also take my initial state and simply pass it directly here. Get rid of this constant. So now I'm just changing the initialization. Um, I'm doing it here, having my object here. So let's say we not only have this moth reducer, but we also have another feature in our application where we do user related stuff. So we have the user reducer and this initial state would have, let's say, have a name, max, and an age, 27. So that would just be another reducer with another initial state. We, of course, can have multiple states in this application, one per reducer, to be precise, because the reducer is the one responsible for handling the state. And we can handle multiple states with multiple reducers. So here we have two features, some math related stuff and some user related stuff. And here we might have, let's say, a set name action and let's say a set age uh, action. And in the set name action here, I of course also want to use the old state like I did before. But then here I want to override the name and set it equal to action payload. And in the set age case here, I would do the same for the age, set it equal to action payload. So now I got a brand new reducer handling totally different actions. Now the problem is create store here, whoops, expects one reducer. I can't pass multiple reducers as arguments. So I can't do math reducer and then user reducer. That, that doesn't work. That's not how it works. I can only pass one reducer. But thankfully, Redux has multiple reducers in mind. Therefore, I can import a new method here, which is called combine reducers. And you might already guess what it does. It combines reducers. Awesome, right? So in the create store method, I can now call combine reducers. And this expects a JavaScript object, which simply holds my reducers. So math reducer and then math reducer. So we have to map them. Now, if I use the same name for the property as the value, ES6 allows me to shorten this and just pass math reducer and user reducer. And ES6 will automatically expand this to key value pairs where the key name matches the value name. So the name of this uh, variable or constant here. So with that, I'm telling Redux create a new store and the store should be aware that there are multiple reducers. Now that is all, that is all. If I save this and reload my application here, you see now my store has this overall state, which has then the math reducer and the user reducer. And the math reducer is this substate, if you want to call it like this. The same state as you saw in the last video, but now handled in a global state. Because in the end, our store here holds one big application state. It may only hold one, not multiples. But this big application state, this JavaScript object we created here, may then have multiple kind of sub-states. The state handled by the math reducer, the state handled by the user reducer, and so on. And that's what we're seeing here. One big global state, which then has these two sub-states, which have, well, their own state. So, with that in place, I can add new methods also use the user reducer 
So we can call set age here and set this to 30. And if I save this and reload my application and go to the last state here, you see now the age is 30. If I have a look at the state previous to this, so to the action dispatch before the last action, you see the age is 27. Because indeed I do change the age in the very last action I dispatch here. Important thing here, as you might already have recognized, the names for the actions here may only be used once because I'm dispatching them on my store and not on the reducers. So here, if I were to have an add action in my user reducer 2, then this would be kind of bad because I have an add action here too. So we have to make sure that we use unique actions here. And this is how easy you use multiple reducers. That's all that's to it. Important thing to keep in mind, one global state, this JavaScript object, which may then have substates.